Ryan Day is missing the standard of what is expected at Ohio State. And obviously the loss yesterday, 23 to 45 was the final in Columbus, in the shoe. A lot to unpack with this one, but I want to do this video because to properly fix whatever the issues are, you first have to acknowledge what is wrong and what is going on internally in Columbus. And so the first thing that I want to say is, is why is this frustrating? Like That's the whole thing that we have to talk about today after a rivalry game. Why does this hurt so bad? To the outside world, it might think like, okay, you know, you lost your rival. I know it's a big deal and everyone loses your rival. But for those people in Columbus, it's, it's so much more than that. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I think it comes back to the standard and the fact of the matter that Ryan Day is missing that standard. And obviously, it's laid out by the fan base. It's beat Michigan. It's win the Big Ten and it's play for national titles. Like that has been the standard since before Ryan Day got there. But in addition to that, the reason why I think this is even more uncomfortable today in Columbus is because Ryan Day has not shied away from that. In fact, he has communicated and echoed that sentiment that, yes, that's what we expect. That's what you should expect from us here at Ohio State. And so for Ohio State fans now, the second year in a row losing to Michigan is starting to become a matter of, okay, well, you say this is a standard, which standard essentially means the normal, the bare minimum. And on two separate occasions, you have not only missed the standard, but fell short of it spectacularly. Ohio State fans are saying, okay, is, is that the standard or is that just lip service? Because you can talk all year long. You can beat Rutgers, you can beat Michigan State, and that's great. We appreciate that. But you and I both know what you do against that team in blue, as they say in Columbus, is what you're judged by. And so now there's becoming a little bit, in my opinion, a lack of trust for the direction of this program under Ryan Day. And I think we got to unpack that a little bit more today after, again, a devastating loss to Michigan at home, no less. Quick note, I'm Jody Pakel. This is The Hard Count. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you. We do college football content every single day. Also, follow me on the social channels at Jody Pakel on Instagram and also on Twitter. Here's one of the main things that you heard yesterday from Ohio State fans after the loss to Michigan. Ohio State recruits far too well to play that poorly. And the numbers back it up. The data backs up that complaint. Because if you look at the recruiting classes and the on three consensus team recruiting rankings since 2018, so most of the guys that played in that game were recruited before 2018. Since 2018, Michigan has had a higher ranked class than Ohio State one time. So what does that mean? On paper, Ohio State is getting into their program on average. Again, this is on paper. This is at the high school level. More talented players after their senior year of high school. Still, like I said, for the second year in a row, you got it handed to you. So that means there's two possibilities for why that's happening. The first is you're not developing the talent. And I don't know that I subscribe so much to that belief because of all the guys that have gone through that program and that are now playing in the NFL. So I don't so much side with that train of thought. But the other possibility is, okay, well, you're not putting that talent and those elite players in position to succeed. They're not being utilized to their maximum potential. And that's where the problem lies. Because you got a guy like C.J. Stroud who owns a ton of Ohio State passing records. He's in all of the top 20 or top 15, I believe, for the majority of the major records, whether it's you know single season or career. Like He's a guy that rewrote and made his presence felt in Columbus. And still, a generational quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks to ever come through Columbus, and he never beat Michigan? How does that happen? Right? Like, how does, how does a guy like C.J. Stroud get to Ohio State, have the career he has, and never win the Big Ten? And C.J. Stroud understands that's, that's going to be the way that his legacy is judged a few years down the road. Phenomenal stats. Did a lot of good things here. Never beat Michigan. Never won the Big Ten. And I don't think that's just C.J. Stroud's fault. The feeling today in Columbus and the feeling at the beginning of the year as it pertained to the 2021 season was we have so much talent on offense for Ohio State. We have so much potential. We can't waste that offensive talent for what we don't have on defense. And it's why you went out and got Jim Knowles. It's why you 
you know, retooled the entire defense. And it's not to say the Ohio State offense played phenomenal yesterday, scored three points in the second half, inexcusable. But to the same token, you allow over 200 yards rushing, it's hard to win a football game. Got to play complimentary football. Got to be able to, when you don't have your best day on either side of the ball, be able to pick the other side up. And we didn't see that from Ohio State yesterday. So here is, I think, the ultimate just twist of the dagger if you're an Ohio State fan today. What you saw yesterday in that loss against Michigan, yes, it was at home. That hurts. Yes, it was the second year in a row. That hurts as well. But to make matters worse, that loss in the shoe felt a whole lot like that loss that you saw a season ago in Ann Arbor. Now, two things can be true. Ohio State could be a tougher football team, a more physical football team than they were a season ago. And Michigan still out physical that program because they ran for over 200 yards again, like they did in Ann Arbor, had the exact same yards per carry, 7.2. They didn't have that edge. They didn't have that championship edge that's required in a spot like this in your house with playoff implications with a chance to go punch your ticket to the Big Ten title game. You got to have that edge about yourself. And the most telling thing to me during that Michigan press conference, because that's where I went after the game, was a lot of those players on the Michigan side saying, yeah, we got into that third and fourth quarter, and we could tell from the body language, from the way that Ohio State was taking the field, the way that we were getting off the ball and they weren't getting quite the same push, we could tell that they were vulnerable. We could tell that there was, not to use, you know, this wasn't their words, but this is my feeling, they could tell there was blood in the water and they were about to frenzy. That's a reflection of Ryan Day. I hate to say it, and it's maybe not 100% on his shoulders, but as the head coach, you're responsible for getting your team ready to play in the third and fourth quarter. Do you still have to execute offensively? 100%. CJ Stroud can't throw two picks. Your defense can't allow what they allowed on the ground. Like, I understand that. It's, it's a team loss, but at the end of the day, with how much talent they have, with the spot they were in, uh, Ryan Day has got to take a look in the mirror and, and reassess his whole process and what they have to do to not have this happen for a third time. Because I tell you what, leaving the stadium yesterday, I mean, it felt like you were leaving a funeral for everybody in Columbus. Like that was the kind of vibe. It was hushed. It was, it was melancholy. There was a lot yesterday that just felt at a loss because Ohio State was extremely confident coming into that game. Not just internally, but externally as well. That fan base felt like they were about to have some revenge. Obviously, it was not the case. So, that's awful. We have to address that. But at the end of this whole thing, there has been enough madness across the college football landscape to where if you're a Buckeye fan, yes, today is, is just a, a, a dark day. Like, it's, it's not fun, again, losing two years in a row to your rival. You have to live a whole other year till this game comes back. With that being said, there's been enough chaos in college football to where you now have a slim chance to extend your season and make the college football playoff. Now they're going to play in a bowl game. I'm sure that'll be phenomenal. Do we see CJ Stroud? I hope so. But if they get a USC loss in this Pac-12 title game to Utah, a team that already beat them once before, I think Ohio State is sitting right there, ready to jump in the four spot. So can you imagine if we get Michigan-Ohio State in the national championship game? The script would write itself. But at the end of the day, Ryan Day and company for the second year in a row do not achieve the standard internally, do not achieve the standard set by their fan base, and had a very familiar-looking loss in how it all went down, and they have to take a look in the mirror now and take a look at their culture. So, definitely not a, a lost program by any stretch of the imagination, but there is some, some very real introspection that has to occur in Columbus. I'll leave it at that. This has been The Hard Count. I'm J.D. Pakel. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you. College football content every single day. Jack Terry doing the heavy lifting. But this is the people show. So every single thing. You know and love about college football. Like I already said, it happens here every single day. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.